Space, the final frontier! There's something on the wing! Balled me up, Scotty. <laughs> okay, that's enough. We have already discovered so much in our universe. Things that are absolutely mind-blowing that we had no idea were there previously. But with advancements in technology, we keep finding more and more incredible things. So many, in fact, that the topic deserves a part two. Here are the 10 most fascinating things ever found in space, part 2. Number 10 is Universal Acceleration. By now, you've probably heard that the universe is expanding, but the rate of that expansion is an anomaly. It appears that the universe is speeding up. All of the galaxies in the known universe are moving away from each other at a faster and faster rate. The reason the acceleration of the universe is such a big deal is that a lot of physicists did not expect to see this. And so new theories are created to explain what's going on. Some suggest that previously undetected forces are at play, such as dark energy, while others propose that something called the back reaction conjuncture is true. This just means that the different parts of the universe are expanding at different rates, not all at the same speed. We just happen to be in a region of space that's expanding faster than the rest of the universe. But for now, the rate of this expansion remains an anomaly, and there's nothing wrong with a constantly expanding universe. Hashtag space positivity. Number nine is the amount of matter in the universe. Current theories suggest that the Big Bang should have produced the same amount of matter and antimatter. But in truth, there was more matter than antimatter, and that is an anomaly. Matter, of course, makes up everything that we see around us, and antimatter is like a mirror reflection of that substance. When both matter and antimatter touch, they should destroy each other. So logically, if you had the exact amount of each, there should be nothing left in the universe of note. But here we are, all made up of matter. That must mean then that there was more matter in the universe than antimatter. As of yet, no one really understands why this is the case. Physicists argue that there must be an unknown law that they haven't discovered yet, which explains it. But until then, this fact is treated as an anomaly. Number eight is the Pioneer Anomaly. There's an anomaly in space that's slowing down two of our oldest space probes. Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 were launched in the early 70s to investigate the outer planets and beyond. Amazingly, after completing their missions, they continued on into the cosmos, transmitting data for another 20 years. Side note, we had this technology in the 70s and I can't even get a battery in my phone that lasts more than half a day. While moving away from our sun, engineers and scientists noticed that both probes were slowing very slowly slightly, but no one knew what was causing this change in speed. Then in 2012, a paper was published claiming that they may have solved the mystery. The explanation given was that thermal recoil force produced by radiation was the culprit. However, while many accept this explanation, there are still issues in explaining why the anomaly began as the probes passed Saturn, and why the anomaly seemed to change over time. Saturn aliens, Saturn aliens, I'm calling it right now, Saturn aliens. Number seven is Neith. The mystery of Neith goes all the way back to 1672 and is an anomaly that some struggle to explain. Back in 1672, an astronomer named Giovanni Cassini observed the moon of Venus. Other astronomers soon confirmed these observations with the last reported sighting in 1768, but the problem with these observations is that Venus doesn't have any moons. Aliens, I'm calling it again, aliens. The phantom moon was named Neith after the Egyptian goddess and is still a bizarre anomaly in the history of astronomy. Now, it's tempting to think that astronomers centuries ago didn't have the tools in order to properly observe Venus closely, but throughout that time, telescopes were available and used. Some of the observations were so detailed and provided by reputable astronomers that it's difficult to dismiss. So if Venus did have a moon, what happened to it? Death Star, I'm sorry, I had to. It's Death Star, it got destroyed. Number six is Paranego's discontinuity. 
Perinigo's discontinuity is an anomaly found in the movement of stars. Discovered by Pavel Perinigo in the 1950s, it's a phenomenon which still baffles scientists. Usually the orbit of stars are well defined, except when it comes to cooler stars. Mathematically, we should be able to predict the movement of cooler stars as they orbit our galaxy, but we can't do that reliably. These stars seem to orbit our galaxy faster than they actually should. Perhaps the most controversial explanation for this comes from the physicist Gregory Matloff. He's currently running experiments to see if the stars are using jets of material to alter their motion. Yes, yes, you heard me right. Matloff believes that stars might actually be choosing to move in certain ways themselves. Oh, sentient stars? That's weird. Well, I don't know if he's right, but the idea of conscious stars? Well, that's a lot better than Los Angeles. We have a lot of unconscious stars. You know, drugs and alcohol and stuff. It's a problem. Number five is the flyby anomaly. The flyby anomaly is a phenomenon which as of yet has no explanation. Scientists have noted that as a satellite passes a large body such as a planet, that its speed increases more than is expected. The anomaly seems to contradict aspects of Newtonian physics and has left astronomers, engineers, and physicists scratching their heads. The change in speed is minute and isn't enough to adversely affect the trajectory of a satellite, but even the smallest of changes can have the biggest of impacts in physics. In effect, some unknown source is providing each satellite with more kinetic energy than it actually should have. Now while there's currently no consensus, some theories have been put forward such as undetected fluctuations in gravity or the effects of solar radiation. My theory is that there's no space cops, so why not speed a little? Number 4 is the Axis of Evil. <laughs> There's another anomaly in our universe which could reverse centuries of scientific understanding. It's been labeled the axis of evil by the scientists who study it because its implications are disastrous for the Copernican view of the universe. This view states that there's nothing special about Earth. We're not at the center of the universe, so things don't revolve around us. Unlike that one friend you have that thinks the whole world revolves around them, cut that person off. But the axis of evil anomaly suggests that there's something special about our solar system. It's a measurement of the cosmic background radiation produced by the Big Bang. Now it should be the same everywhere, but it's not. One half of the universe is colder than the other half, and even more mind-blowing, our solar system sits in the middle. This is either an unbelievable coincidence, or our solar system is special for some reason. And there goes the comment section of half the people saying, God is real, and the other saying, No, he's not! <laughs> Number three is the Kuiper Cliff. The Kuiper Belt is a huge disk of space in the outer part of our solar system, which is associated with a mysterious anomaly. The belt itself is measured from the orbit of Neptune and extends around 50 astronomical units from the Sun. That's over 7 billion kilometers. It's, that's a long distance, in case you didn't get that. It's very, very far away. It contains a vast number of small rocky and icy bodies, such as dwarf planets, asteroids, and comets. Now, scientific models suggest that there should be twice as many of these objects, but for some unknown reason, the Kuiper Belt seems to stop suddenly, followed by an empty void of space. Some theories suggest that we simply cannot see what's there because the objects are too small and dim, but others argue that there may be a large object, perhaps a planet or a failed star, which has sucked up the material in the past. Number two is the astronomical unit. The astronomical unit is one of the most relied upon measurements in all of astronomy, but something strange may be happening to it. One astronomical unit is the mean distance between the Earth and the Sun. This equates to 149,597,870.7 kilometers. Got that all out in one breath. Yes, thank you. Now you'd expect this measurement to be stable as much of the life on our planet depends upon our distance from the sun. But the astronomical unit is changing and it's increasing by a few centimeters each year. One theory for this is that it's because our sun is decreasing in mass slightly each year due to producing solar radiation and flares. And so as it gets smaller, our sun's gravitational pull weakens. The problem with this is that some physicists believe that it isn't losing enough mass to account for the earth moving farther away. So the anomaly remains unsolved. <laughs> we'll figure it out, maybe. Or we'll die. We'll see. 
And number one are the stars older than the universe. Using tried and tested techniques to measure the age of objects in our cosmos, astronomers have discovered a bizarre anomaly. Some stars are older than the universe itself. Okay, we're getting deep here, folks. Get ready. The current estimate for the age of the universe is around 13.8 billion years old, but the oldest known star seems to be 14.5 billion years old. Now, you might think that these ancient stars are so far away that we can't measure them correctly, but one of the most famous, nicknamed Methuselah, is just 100 90 light years away. Several solutions to this problem have been offered, including a flaw in how we measure star age or how we measure the universe's age. But as it stands, no one really knows if these stars are older than the universe or not. And if they are, what does that mean? <laughs> So, the 10 most fascinating things ever found in space part 2. But if you guys want to watch part 1, make sure you tap or click or whatever device you're on on the screen right now and you can watch part 1. I tell you, there's a lot of weird stuff out there. Get ready for it. I'll see you next time.